some of the bundle, like controller, you know, sort of pre-configured pieces seem to only be available on one website that doesn't look like it's maintained anymore. Um, this one, though, I mean, it's it's a uh, you know it's big, it's really big, right? The cutting surface is 24 inches by 48 inches. Oh, wow. um, it's uh, you can you can have a, your laser can be from 40 watt to 100 watt, which 100 watts is pretty serious stuff. Mm -hmm. Powerful, will cut through a lot of stuff. I suppose it ramps up your risk too, you know. Uh, and that's you know I I don't think it's gonna I don't think it's gonna be a long process to get it built. You know it's gonna be looking at the uh, let's see. yeah the bill of materials is uh, it's pretty straightforward. You know and it looks like a lot of this stuff they've got it well documented. You know, they, they got it through, so this is the, the company that did the original, they did a Kickstarter in 2010 to prototype this. So they sell a lot of the pieces. Um, you know, a lot of it, I don't necessarily think, you know, we got it, we'll have to source directly from them. It's, you know, generic, you know, stepper motors and things like this. Um, these other sources, uh, you know, this is like a lot of the frame and the gantry from this place and this is you know that extruded aluminum channel stuff I think is isn't that specific you know there's a lot of a lot of other places out there to get it from so uh, I think I think what the, the first step is going to be the uh, this this big list here and starting to get the uh, the components for building out the frame um, you know I think the original Plan of using that one work table back there. It might start out. It might work out initially, but it's uh, it gets this gets large as you get it assembled. Um, and then once it's assembled, you know, I don't know that um, I'd be comfortable. I don't think you've seen. We, so I we reworked that back room where we stored all those computers. And now it's sort of a dedicated space back there for us. To, kind of the little tiny mini maker space. Uh, when this is operational, you know, it needs to be vented. It needs to be, uh, you know, you got to have some fire suppression materials, you know, the extinguisher. And that, I've seen in some of the other maker spaces I've visited, sometimes they'll uh, dedicate a really small room for it, and then they'll just rig up uh, a camera system to at least be able to see so don't have to sit in there. I mean, you really do, I think, want to monitor these because it's depending on what you're cutting, it's, there's a potential that it can ignite yeah. um, pretty quick. Now, that metal doesn't like drip when it's cutting, or I think it just vaporizes it. Um, Is it good for like glass bottles? I think it can etch glass. It can etch. It can etch leather. They can etch wood. Um, etch, but cut, could cut. Probably not. Oh. I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen. Um, probably not. Because that would vaporize. Uh, Do you think this maker space could um, get some glass cutting materials? Because I've really been interested personally in more. Uses for um, beer and wine bottles. As a matter of fact, it's going to, and, and the reason why is I've got, I've got um, a bunch of stained glass tools in glass in my basement because my my uh, dead mom and dad, those old people, old the guy with the white beard that was at that thing the other night. He's uh, they both used to teach community at stained glass on Grand Way. Uh, and so he gave me a bunch of stuff and I never had the time or inclination to, to learn it. So I've got, I've got a grinder, you know, one of those little uh, wet grinders you can use for smoothing edges. I've got, I've got a little kit that's for uh, cutting for Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. 
I've got, you know, I've got all of the stuff, the, the uh, solder and the foil tape and all of, all of that. So that's that's a piece that we're going to have. You know, um, I've got, I just got a message from a woman who volunteered this to me or offered this to me months ago. I just not got around to picking it up. A, uh, a kiln, an electric kiln but a big one, right? So that's something else, and I was just up at the FIA checking out their expanded art school. You know, they added a big add-on to their uh, clay area. They've got uh, some new furnaces, they've got a whole bunch of new electric kilns, they've got really nice welding stations there now. You know, they've always had Raku space. I was talking to their director about, they don't do anything with hot glass, which I think is a pretty cool thing too, like blowing and, and that sort of stuff, but with the kiln, and with glass, you can do the, um, what's it called? The fusing, slumping, you know, where you you heat up pieces and it just kind of melts. Melts them together? Yeah. Oh man, that, that definitely opens up the possibilities. So yeah, I've got, I've got right now, and yeah, she messaged me this morning. She's like, are you going to pick this up? Because uh, she's out in Atlas Township. But it's a big, you know, it's about this tall. Right. And so this is the stuff, and I, because I put out a message, um, six months ago, you know, like with a list of things like, hey, you know, if you've got something collecting dust in your basement, you know, we can take it and we can store it. Um, we're a nonprofit, so you can take that right off just like you would for donating any other equipment. Uh, and she, if that doesn't work out, I believe my mother still has the very same thing, a large electric kiln. Yeah, well, and that's what, see, you know, I don't know, um, so, Obviously, this space isn't well equipped for that. You know, this building. Um, I mean, I've got some. I could do a little bit down in the basement, but it's not optimal, and it does. The it's, it's really damp down there. And, um, I don't think Joel really like having something that's a potential fire hazard, you know, running because he does. The, it's he's the guy. He's, he's the director of Red Ink, you know. He also owns the building. Um, but when we do, when we we get a permanent dedicated location, which I think is going to be in the next six months, I'm hopeful. Um, you know, I, I definitely see having a, an area that's sort of dedicated for more arts and handcraft stuff. And that's where I've been, you know, down in Grand Rapids, they've got a, a group called GR Makers, and they've got, they've got a, a really nice laser cutter, and they've got a, a they've got a really, really nice 3D printer. It's, I think it's got three extruders on, so it can do three color, three material. Um, they've got a really nice wood shop and metal shop. Uh, they've also, they've got, they've got a kiln and they've got some stuff for doing, um, you know, arts and, uh, you know, that's a, you know, how I envision it here at Flint. I mean, the, the space, what I want to have, what I'd like to see is a, a place to, do this sort of stuff or do this sort of stuff, you know, sort of advanced manufacturing and programming tech, but also, you know, be able to connect and appeal to the, the arts community as well. And then, and then I think that there's lots of room for overlap, you know, I mean, and that's what some of the stuff that you see, like down at, uh, I think Art Prize in Grand Rapids opens up this weekend, or if not this weekend, pretty soon. And uh, the GR Makers Group is going to have an entry in our price. They're doing a huge LED light sculpture, you know, so it's kind of uh, a mix of both tech and arts. And emblems or something? Well, yeah, that's, that's what. Um, Get word out about the project and all kinds of stuff. Right, well, that's where. You know, with the, uh, the laser cutter, you know, you can do lots of neat stuff. The 3D printers, we've got, there was a guy who was here, we, we did like an open house in our little space Thursday, and there's a guy who works with us, and he's got a couple of 3D printers, and I think they're cool. They take a long time you know, to make stuff, and, and it's really, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's fun to tinker with, but practically it's, um, it's hard to get a pipeline of stuff going. Um, but you know what? Uh, uh, the Fab Lab over at the uh, Regional Tech Center, uh, that's one, you know, I've been there uh, and 
I was really impressed by the type of stuff that they've got. They've got, they've got a 40 watt laser cutter, they've got a um, 3D scanner, and 3D printer. They've got vinyl cutters. Vinyl cutters are really cool too. Really, vinyl cutters are like those uh, cricket, right? They used to sell them in hobby things, you know, you could. What it does, it's like these, right? It's a it's a CNC or XY you can cut through stuff, but you can do with vinyl cutters. That's what a lot of times when you see really elaborate, looks like stickers or lettering kind of things. Yeah. Um, so they've got that. They've got all that stuff there. That would be very useful because I need to make signage. Well, but the thing, but so you know, I encourage you to check it out, right? I mean, if you Google Mont Fablet, you get right to their site. They talk about what they have. It's just it's it's hard to figure out how you have you know coming off of the streets how you get access to that their their tool set and their space and they do they've got limited hours. I mean I think they're only open ten to four you know Monday through Friday, which makes it tough if you've got a job to get in there. And then uh, and then it's just kind of like it's I think that they it's. They've got a better um, structure, but it seemed before like it was almost like he had to like buy credit. Like he didn't have to be a student, but the way that they structured it was almost like credit hours. So it's just um, and there, you know, and that's what they, I think that they see themselves as more of a uh, school. Yeah, school. They're there for they they get the not kids engaged. You know, they do like project management now. Like so, if you've got an idea of something. You know some widget that you want to prototype, and you think you could you could take it to market, but you don't know how to use these or three D printers or something, something or three D printers or anything else like that. They will get people to work with you, and they will develop it, and they will do the solid modeling for you, and, and and ultimately make the product for you. And so it helps the students, it gives them sort of real world experience. Um, but I, I think it's less catered, you know. Like makerspaces, typically, if they've got this sort of stuff, we'll offer once a month, like something like this, right? Come down, three-hour class, you pay, you know, some kind of materials, but you get exposed to how to use the equipment safely, uh, introduction to the to the software that you use for uh, designing and, and working with the equipment, um, and then once you once you've got that, you know, it's that. Uh, you're qualified to use the equipment, and then you know whatever their their use structure is. Whether you know some places will do day memberships or week memberships or monthly memberships. The design software is it like Autodesk based, or is it? So uh, with this stuff, it's um, anything like Corel Draw. Um, what is that raster? Uh, you know, it's. Because when you go to print, it's it's just like sending to a printer. You know, it's like sending to a plotter. Is how the computer sees it. Mm -hmm. um, and then though you, there's something in between that does the code conversion, and that's where you can you can adjust intensity. You know, sometimes if you're doing, uh, you know, like if you're doing etching. I've never, I've never, I've never. So then you could just like um, pick up something in a regular, or make something in a regular, like. Um, Word or something, and then say like the Illustrator. You know, it's going to be it's going to be uh, not in Word. It's not like uh, printing um, an image that you cut and paste it into Word. It's got to be and that's what there's there's raster based effect based. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, so it needs a special program. Right? Yeah, but that special program. I mean, there's there's open source choices. Corel isn't you know Corel Draw isn't like a you know, hugely expensive, um, like you know, there's some of the some of the stuff in 3D printing for doing the design. Like what is it like SolidWorks, like things like that? You can get like the way that the old CAD software used to be, where really, really expensive the seats. You know, a lot of people, you know, a lot of pirating. You know, and a lot of share, um, and that's what um, like uh, so. You can, you know, but there's usually there's open source alternatives that you can work with that are, are pretty workable. Uh, some some maker like uh, MakerWorks in Ann Arbor, that's what they've got a lot of really high end software, you know, like licensed stuff. But it's uh, 
you know, they do, they've got a license for three or four workstations, and so that's another, another one of their offerings. Is um, the, um, are the lady, are we still here? Adrian? Yeah, you know, I messaged her to say what's her, what's her EPA? So, 17 minutes ago, it was 15 minutes. Not 13 minutes ago, it was 15 minutes. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, I've, uh, I'm someone who's walking up and down the side of the street looking at motorcycles. Um, and then, and so you said, what did you, there was discussion ahead of this that maybe they would do, or that what was going to be covered? No, not JS. At least that was my impression, but it's still kind of iffy. Right. I had suggested that um, it was an official thing or anything. Yeah. The forager? Yeah. 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 I'm a you know system admin. I'm an IT manager. I did uh, my undergrad at U of M Flint uh, in the mid to late '90s, and so I did the you know that's when it was only computer science. Now they've got CIS. They've split it into a couple of categories, but so in the five years there, uh, we did we did Pascal. We did uh, Cobol. You know, we had assembler, and it was uh, cobalt. Still seems to be a, a thing. So. Yeah, and, and I, I really don't understand why, but it's just it's so entrenched and embedded. Exactly. Uh, so I see there's even an option to order a cobalt. Really? You know, but it's like so. So I don't in my day to day stuff. I, I do very very little coding, a little bit of scripting for you know doing stuff in SharePoint. Um, and that's just an end of it. I don't do development, but just little tweaks here and there. Is this a website building up? Notice on the server is But it's all written, not all written in, but it basically all bringing in use in JavaScript. So it's really like a backend for JavaScript. JavaScript usually comes on a browser. So we're trying to create a full stack that is JavaScript based. So they even have, um, they even have like database systems that are being built in so, yeah. so what's an example of something that you've done with it? Me personally, I'm just starting to learn it, so I haven't done anything professional with it. But I do, you know, I use JavaScript all the time, so it's pretty much uh, like the, looking at the back of my head kind of thing. So um, they are uh, doing, I think, it was, oh, with, with Node, it's basically, it's not like a typical um, HTTP server. You can like run open sessions, like uh, it keeps us the, uh, the session's opening. Does it, is it stateless or state based? Well, it, it can make, maintain your state. I'm not sure if you mean that. Um, stateless is the browser hits it and then does its thing and then totally forgets about it. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. And the state based is the browser hits it and then it stays connected for each of them. And gets that it gets deals with and stuff. So yeah, it it, it, it maintains a connection. It, it it depends on what you're doing. So how is this club going to work? Is it just going to be doing like random presentations on interesting things, or are we going to run through learning? So I think I think her what she'd like to do with this and this is so again this is the first time I've, I've said it because I've you know I offered the space up for her to use it um, it goes back to she had talked about it at one of her 
entrepreneurial and innovation you know, things that she had helped in. Uh, so Adrian's got a little bit of tech background, but it's more she, like she wants to learn programming. And she knows there's a lot of people out there that have expertise in different, in different areas. And so I think uh, sort of how she envisions this is, um, and she's not there yet, but you know, sort of having, having with some regularity meeting with people that are just have no experience. No background, you know, and start, start, you know, real basic. Good, because yeah, she's what she told me it was okay if I was. Yeah, that's starting. And that's, that's what that's perfect. And that's what she's had, I think, a a, a mix. Um, and then uh, so, but I don't think she's helping with these yet. She, you know, she was thinking about doing it at the library. She's been off in space, and there's tons of available space at the library. And I think she thought. The other, the other, and she would uh, also run something where it's like more intensive, you know? Um, but with, I mean, it's not been, I also, I think originally she thought it would, it would have started out as something where it was, all right, let's focus on one platform, you know, one application, uh, and work on it over a period of time. And so, so far though, I think it's mostly been just the, uh, did you ride your motorcycle down? I said, did you ride your motorcycle down? If I had one, I would. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm waiting, guys. My sister is super sick this morning. My parents are out of town. I like that. So I didn't know if I had to take a nap or not, so I was like, oh my gosh. Well, it's nice little morning. But I'm good. I'm here now. Alright, we're ready for you to teach the class. <laughs> I know, right? Um, I just facilitate. So I didn't know what you guys really wanted to discuss. I mean, I was hoping Jay would be here. I know you're in the microcontrollers. Jackson and microcontrollers. Scott, oh my gosh, I met your sister. I didn't know it was your sister. Because <laughs> I was at the uh, one of the meetings at the chamber, uh -huh. and so I was talking about this group in the IMB meetup, and uh, I was like, oh, I said, I can bring up the group. And uh, so yours was the first one that popped up. I was like, oh, I can bring Scott the last profile. And she's like, that's my brother. <laughs> and then I was like, what? <laughs> Small world, so very cool. Sounds like a problem. <laughs> so, um, yes, I don't really have a set schedule. Well, we talked about a couple of things. So, Miles, you know, Miles was saying, uh, you know, he was wondering, he doesn't have his, you know, he's, he's new at all of this. Mm -hmm. And so he was just, he was, well, and he was wondering about what the structure and framework and the idea behind it. And I was, you know, and I was just trying to guess at what, how you envisioned all of this and going off of just a couple of short conversations. But the general idea was you, you had thoughts about having two sort of Definitely. versions of this? Because there's a, there's a lot of like beginners that don't want to come because they're like, I don't even know what to do, you know, or I don't know how to start, and they feel like when they come, they're like, I don't even understand what's going on. So I really wanted to, and, and it's just like basic, like HTML, CSS, all the like little, little stuff. So I think I'm going to start that group up in November at the library before this group. So you guys are more than welcome to help. <laughs> you don't know how to teach. You know, if you want to, but, um, I've actually just signed up to take a 12 week immersion course um, online with a mentor based out of the firm out of New York. Just to hurry up and catch up, you know, just so I know just enough to start teaching people, you know. Well, so at the library, I mean, when you talk to them, and I know in the basement, and there's a couple of sections upstairs that they've kind of closed up. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there a space that can be dedicated 
sort of permanent with, because you know, I think if you're going to do something like that and you're going to, I mean, I think the way to do it is to settle on one something, right? Something that you can, you know, sort of tutorial, web driven sort of thing uh, that you, people can work through. But I think, you know, you're going to need uh, to have machines available. You know, it's got to, I think it's got to be kind of more of a classroom setting. And they, I, I checked out the facility and they have this like computer lab upstairs and I think they said they can get at least 18 people in there. So they've already got the machines already set up and... Yeah, they do. They wanted to incorporate us into their like fall programming too, just to open it up. So 
you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of, all right, well, what are ways, you know, because I've obviously, I've got a thing that I'm trying to expand and develop with, with the makerspace, and then this kind of is in line with it. Uh, I think, uh, you know, that's something that I've got some budget, and I can, you know, I can get, I can build up, so for a, a lab like that, right, what do you need? You need, you know, having a control, having the little Arduino, you know, and a breadboard and the other stuff that you need it would be nice to work through that. And that's the type of thing that I think that, um, you know, uh, you could have someone leading that, or I mean, it could be more like a group learning type of thing. Um, and also, there's less of a need, you know, that's the thing about this space, it's tough to, to dedicate. I've got computers that I could build a lab with, but it's just I can't, this room gets used for a number of things. So, you know, there's a lot of people that might come to that to have, can bring a laptop. We've got a handful of laptops that we could do for that, or that we could provide for that. If you think that this is something that, uh, you know, we, that could be a regular, you know, something productive, because um, it might be, you know, it might get tough just trying to, you know, sort of go around Robin and and just finding someone with something that, you know, they got a passion about it, but, you know, whether or not that it could justify coming down just to, to learn, and to, you know, to hear about it, it's kind of, it's, I think it's a little bit, if you're going to give up part of your Saturday, you want to get something out of it. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that you or me need to settle on that being something, but I mean, I would be willing to work uh, to, you know, I could source like an eight person, eight to 10 person classroom worth of, uh, you know, materials that you need on hand to do that in a, in a group setting. Uh, you know, whether it's, you know, a bunch of Uno kits, have, have a small library of available laptops to use, kind of check out, use, you know, have a big box that, or you have a L, you know, grab a box of LEDs and jumper wires and breadboards. Uh, or it could be Raspberry Pi, you know, starting out with that. Um, you know, so that, that might be something that would give a little bit of more structure to doing this. Um, you know, and then just kind of pick an arbitrary, you know, I don't know, uh, four four classes, right? I mean, it's not it's because it's not the type of thing, and especially right if it was if this was the group that saying, all right, none of us have got a ton of experience with with Arduino, um, and so we're going to work through the introductory, teach you the basics of the code and the basics of building test circuits. Um, you know, that's not the type of thing that in any group, you know, you're going to be able to do it for eight or 12 weeks because eventually you're going to, you know, you'll have people that are scaling up and then, you know, people can't really step in. So that might be an idea, something like that, you know, picking a, picking a short run, four week, you know, not necessarily, and then, you know, thinking selfishly, right, like you, you wouldn't be able to do it every Saturday because people can't give up, you know, it's tough when you got family and everything else to come into that. but. Uh, you know, like a two or three every second or third, you know, some sort of schedule. So that's just a thought. Yeah, I mean, for me, I'd really like to pick a pick one thing, a project, and then have us all work on it. But I don't know what you guys this sole interest. Well, and so and this is again. So I'm, you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking strategically from what I'm trying to do, right? So I've got some budget accumulating, you know bench stuff like that to have on hand for again when we when we expand and take over. Uh, having that sort of stuff is a good thing to have anyway. It's the type of stuff that I'd want to have available. So uh, and then being more actively involved, you know, in a program like this, you know, it looks good for us. It looks good as we're trying to sort of uh, generate interest that they're building the community of people that want to be involved with us and also you know, down the road if we're looking for funding and that sort of thing. Um, so, you can yeah. just let me know. I mean, I'm on board with microcontrollers, uh, but I, I want to hear well, from you guys. You indicated there were some 
additional interest, and I missed the last meeting. So can you, yeah. can you give a feel for that? I mean, how many people, you know, what, what level they're in? They're really interested. Okay. Um, so there's about oh, three four, four of them. Okay. Yeah. And I know that they, they're they very more, <laughs> more. So they have like a double E background, and then they have the mechanical engineering. And, um, I know that we were talking about, um, we're sitting around the table before, so what could we do? Because we really want to, at least in that smaller group, like tackle an issue that Flint is experiencing. And so we came up with the idea of like, what if we made, we programmed a microcontroller to be like sensor operated, connecting to like a GPS type of Google Maps signal um, to, to mow abandoned properties. Crazy, right? Well, totally possible. So there's if a. We were able to know how to do that. You know? Well, you know, right? There's a there's a thing called Sprout Lab. It's based out of I think Grand Valley. Um, they uh, so what they're working to promote it's between Grand Valley I think and they're also partnered with Saginaw Valley, where they're trying to sort of connect tech uh, innovation with agriculture um, and that was when I first heard about it a year ago you know the woman had reached out to make sure I was doing this sort of stuff and so she thought you know I might have a crew interested that would go to their seminar we were really really in the infancy then uh, but you know my thoughts were like yeah you know this is there is there's opportunities for that sort of intersection where you can have uh, you know programmable controllers microcontrollers that are community so you, you, you provide tools and things that could work in this, you know, impending revolution of urban farming, you know, and with, you know, with the controllers, right? I mean, it's everything from the sensors, right, that they're doing pH inputs and, and to be able to make, you know, uh, agriculture more high tech. I mean, I'm sure it's already getting that way in the big industrial farming, but bringing it down to the, uh, you know, either people with gardens or people that are doing the you know, small scale stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, so if I mean, if, if we think if we think that's something that there would be some interest, you know, I will I you know, I'll work with you to to flesh out, you know, at least the, the pieces that we would need. To have on hand to to learn and so like for you Miles, you, know, you said you've not done any of this and this is I mean you know I sat through I've read through the introduction to Adreno you know and it's all it's it's you know it's a lot of kind of hello world type stuff where you you really but it's it you know going through it I've got a tech background in it but it's not it doesn't take a particular uh, you know heavy set of pre-existing skills to get into this. So this is something that, you know, it could also, it doesn't necessarily, it, it doesn't take a high degree of proficiency to be able to step into that. It's the goal, because like I was under the impression, I like money. <laughs> yeah. Amen. So like, pick up stuff to help me make more money. That's basically what brought me here. Right. So that should probably be a, a consideration. So mm -hmm. you know, I, I would think. So you know, I'm I'm not in the position where I'm, I'm I need to try to add to my skill set to expand my. Economic opportunities. Yeah, I think. It, nice. <laughs> I think if I think if I was, I would be. I would be chasing down a lot of the, you know, online. Uh, you know, that sort of the, the stuff that you can do through MIT and a lot of the universities. Um, I don't know that it'd be hard. I think out of a. You know, the, I think about this sort of environment and setting almost, you know, either obvious sort of, you know, empowering that path, or else that kind of gateway to, you know, if, if 
if, if I was a person that didn't, hadn't had any exposure to any of this, and I thought, well, maybe this is something I can pursue and try to chase down to make it economically viable, but you got to start somewhere. Yeah. You know, you're not going to, I don't think you're going to necessarily um, just kind of on a couple of Saturday afternoons, you know, kind of drop in setting, come out of it with, with skills that are going to make you competitive and marketable, but it's that, you know, there, there can be a, a path or a trajectory that way. I think maybe if you get the people together, though, that, you know, that have skills and other people that are in the world, you might be able to figure something out. That's yeah, no, and that's what, and that's what I think one of the, the, the goals might be to come out of it. It's not, um, so getting marketable skills would be good, but it's also, it's that net, the networking exact opportunities. Yeah, that's, well, that's the main thing. I mean, I want to meet two meet people who are really experienced in things. I would definitely want to meet more people who are trying to do the um, mining technology and agriculture, because I really want to be a part of that somehow. And the other thing I really want to know is, what, where should I start learning? If we're jumping right to like programming language, I know there's different ones. What one should I start like now? I want to get ahead on things. Um, when we decide on what programming language we start with. There's not one programming language to make anything anymore. It's like back in the 80s, you could use one language and create a whole a whole application, but now you need like seven or eight because they'll be on the web, some of it will be on one tier, another will be on another tier, so it's like some languages like SQL is solely for the database, JavaScript and HTML and CSS is for the web or you know. The so that's, that's kind of the idea that yeah. nobody's trying to solve. It's, it's you know, trying to make a the entire stack had a JavaScript. So like they they even had um, like I said a database and, and everything. So you write everything. Yeah. I think there's there's foundation things though that you know yeah. like if you learn C plus plus, right? That's I mean there's still people that, that code and yeah. make apps in C plus plus, uh, but that object oriented, you know, foundation helps you would help you go with a lot of other yeah. Yeah, a lot of other avenues. I was trying to do the foundation thing with my presentation, which was on mathematical graphs, mm -hmm. and basically how to use that to, to do some stuff. And I was seeing a lot of glazed eyes. <laughs> so yeah, I, I was like, wow, there's so much to know. Yeah. Well, you know if, if, if the intent is to get into a professional situation, right? I would almost say it doesn't so much matter what language you pick first. So I wouldn't sweat that detail too much. Yeah, it's the you know, algorithm that pick, you know, pick, pick one that is convenient for whatever reason because it's easier you have access to or you just a class a big user base. or whatever, you know. You know, it's something that interests you that you can get into. And and, and learn one well, because I think what you find people that are really good in the field, they know a lot of languages. And they can pick new ones up really quick, you know. So I mean, that's that's kind of where if you really want to be a professional and be good at it, you, know, you got to be able to pick up a book at some point and read it over the weekend and, and know the basics of a new language. And, 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 and that, that probably sounds really difficult, but it's really not once you have the concepts because the concepts translate. All right. So I just really want to know where I can get started so that I can. Um, Follow one of the people are talking about when it comes to these things. There's a lot of online resources if you're looking to, to learn. Right. And I know about them, we, um, we, but I just, I didn't, I wanted some recommendations because I've seen a few. I know there's like the ITT. Uh, well, see, those are paid ones. This is, this is one, the Khan Academy uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah, I know that. I do that website a lot, except apparently this morning it wouldn't let me because my computer is.
anyways. I know about those, but I'm like, if is there one that we're going to pick? Yeah, yeah, we're looking at the classes that are most likely going to be starting in the library for sure. Because everyone's going to be like, I, I don't want like all these new beginners to learn have like all these different languages. Right, like, I, so I'm not, this is, a, and, and I'm not going to, may not necessarily be involved with that, but like as an example, right, they'll settle on Perl, right, which is a scripting language that's pretty powerful, we'll do a lot of stuff, again, it's sort of cross application. And so, what they would have is they would settle on this is going to be the, the thing that we're going to focus on. This is where you can, before going into the class, here's some online resources that you can you can check out and kind of bone up on what you're going to be diving into. And then within the classroom environment, you have everyone that's using the same text editor, you know, get Notepad plus plus on everything, all the computers, everyone's the programming in the same environment. Every, all the computers have the same compilers and, and back-end software on them, so you're able to, to each, you know, help each other out right, and, and make it a little bit more consistent. Um, I gotta go over there to get my son from the dance class, but so I'll just share, it's unrelated to this, right? So I do, I don't, I don't program, I'm just, I've always been like a, you know, I wear a ton of different hats working at mine, um, but with SQL, right? So I know, you know, I know the, the front end stuff design and the SQL management studio, and I know a little bit of command line stuff, but I don't hardly ever do it. Uh, and so I had a, a call last Friday from our accounting department, and one of the, there was a woman, uh, she had, they put in a check and they transposed numbers, right? So instead of 2014, it was 2104. And uh, the application, the uh, accounts payable application, the receivable, you know, once you, once you process the, the payment or whatever, I mean, it's locked in, you can't go back and change it. So it was screwing up her, her numbers, you know, when she was looking at reports. So she called me up and asked me if I would facilitate a three-way call with the vendor. And, um, you know, we've got maintenance on the software, and we've had to deal with this before. And it's, to, to fix it, you've got to go into the back end of the database and find the fields and all. So we did that. I called them, had her on the call. They were connected to my computer so that I could connect into this, the server that's running SQL. And the support guy was like, oh, yeah, we've got to find all the tables where, you know, it's in multiple places where the state field was. And he found the three tables, and he did the query to find the row with the incorrect data. And then he wrote the, the update commands to fix it, right? Because he, he did it the right way, you know, where I, I'm down about it and I just click in the in the results field and edit it that way. And he did it the right way with the command line. And we thought the issue was fixed and so closed the ticket and the, the user called me up 15 minutes later. She's like, yeah, it's still off someplace. So we missed, there was another table. So I called them back at a different person. And the, uh, so on this other, the woman, the support person was great, and we're looking around and we found the, the table that we thought was gonna fix it. And so, and we did this, the, the query to find the row with the wrong date. And so she said, well, do you wanna, you wanna fix it? I'm gonna keep looking at the object browser to see if there's anything else. I said, yeah, that's fine, I'll do it. I just watched the other guy do it. And so, uh, while she's working away on that, I took control and I wrote, you know, you know, use this table, uh, update this row with this data, you know, and hit execute. And I was like, wow, this is, this is taking a long time. <laughs> uh, and it comes back and it said, you know, 12,143 rows affected. And it should have said, <laughs> and we both looked at it and we're like, oh no. Hey, yeah. yeah. And so, and so, what I did uh, was I, I I blew away, you know, a decade's worth of one one date field, and this you know completely broke. The source back up. Yeah. Well, and this is where I was just like, and we were both like, oh shit. And the, the user was like, what, what? And I was like, I gotta go. I gotta run down to the accounting department and tell everyone to get out. And, and so I was sweating going down there, and you know, and I felt like. Oh, it's not my fault. They should have done it, you know. Uh, but I get down to the accounting department and the accounting manager, I stick my head in his office and he told me to get out of the app. He's like, 
that's fine. I wasn't, I didn't open it up all day today. I was like, yes. And then I said, all right, that is, uh, you know, Rebecca, the one woman who does the painfuls, is she in? I said, no, she didn't come in today. And I said, yes. And so then there's only, so now I'm like whittling down the, because we only have us five or six users that use this app. So I get to the next two. And I was like, you guys got to close out the Mass 500. And one said, I haven't opened it up today. And the other one said, yeah, I just did a little bit of work where I can sign the check. So at that point, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm in the clear, right? Because we've got backups that run every night. It just so happens that this is an amount that I never had to restore for backup. So I'm a little bit nervous about that. And so, yeah, so that by that by the time I'm going back up my office, you know, hardly any work had gone in it. The only person that had done any significant amount of work in it was the woman who had called me. And she's already, like, beside herself, upset, like, feeling like it's her fault because she fat figured the date and she's, and so, uh, so I was able to go from that. I said, well, we're going back in time, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be like today never happened. And it was, uh, you know, like the database as it was as of 8 o'clock last night. Um, but, so that's, that's just an example of, see, if I was smart, if I did, if I did uh, database administration and work regularly, you know, I would have, I, you know, there's a way, you know, you do it where it's transactional, right? And so I could have executed the same thing and run it and seen what the results were, but then I would have had to issue another command to actually apply it. Uh, doesn't know about that. So it's more, more like more than you would do. Just push your criteria with the source right. first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you know, and so this is I've been I've been doing this stuff for fifteen years and we still we still screw up. Yeah. Well you're a very good company, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I can I can do with probably a transactional SQL uh, Programming uh, class that would that would be something that would be good for me. Well, no, this is where and if and if I was, I mean, if my job was a, a, a database admin, you know, I would have I would have not just gone back to the backup, right? I would have I would have taken because we I mean, we do the transaction log backups too, so I could have gone back to the night before and then just started rolling forward all of the changes up until I was stupid. Um, right. But after everybody said they hadn't done any work, because I've never had that, it's, it's like I, I know I've got that protection there, but I don't ever need to employ it, so I don't, I'm not comfortable with doing it. All right. Uh, so that's it. So yeah, I mean, I've got, I got to run. I got to get my son. Uh, I can, I'm going to leave this stuff here because I'm going to be coming back. But just, you know, think about it. If this is something, you know, I would be, I would, I think, be up for that sort of thing. But I mean, and it doesn't strictly have to be that. But, you know, if, if I can help by, you know, getting some, some tools, some things to have on hand that would make these sessions, I don't know, just easier to plan for it, yeah. um, and more structured, I'm all for it. Just let me know. Just to find what would interest people. That's yeah, it's the same thing. Well, I just I'm failing to see the focus. Yeah, and that's what we're figuring out. You know, just to um, pick one project. As far as my concerns are, I don't know what we're talking about anymore. Um, I want to know what we're learning here if it is going to be a class. So let me get started on it. Um, yeah. And if we're having people who are already experts coming in, what's their role? I mean, I don't want to, a lot of people aren't going to want to come to the like they have to be there to teach because teaching is hard. But I sort of like want the network inside of this. What's the definition of a programmer? Because it's more than just learning a language. You've got to know Logic. the domain knowledge of you know, what's Right, going and that's on. the other thing. How how long how base are we starting here? Are we starting to do theory or are we just jumping into like HTML language and remembering, you know, the commands? Because that's pretty 
simple to do that kind of thing, but you're also just keep memorizing the things. But also very interesting in case theories and computer logic. Yeah. I mean, for me personally, it's like I'm practicing on the side, I'm doing all the stuff on the side, but it's like, okay, so I know this stuff, so I kind of like use it. You know, and, and, and making it work or, or picking. I think for me, I have this like that jump in and, and figure it out. You know. All right, I'm off. Thanks. We'll see everybody.